are here with Pastor Brian Warren. Thank you for joining us today, Brian. What an honor. And Maggie, you know, it's it's been so long. But, we have a uh, long history, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and I'm looking at your children. They're growing. Yes. You're bringing them to the cry, and everybody is out. Just so good to see you. I'm so tell, proud of you, too. Tell me why it's important to be here, praying for our country on our nation's 150th birthday. Well, there are many... Uh, gatherings that are taking place on this July 1st and we do realize that because it's not just 150 years confederation yep. but 50 50 50 and in Hebrew tradition 50 men and represented the Jubilee and so now this is a really special Jubilee because it's a Jubilee for the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and there's so many government gatherings and things that are being done but there's not a lot of things that have been not only vision but inspired and executed by the church and by Christians and I believe that so many times we're on the bleeding edge instead of the cutting edge yes. and uh, we're late adopters instead of early adopters but Fatine Grzeski she really got uh, a word from the Lord that in the midst of all of that that she needed to call the nation together. And it wasn't just her, because you know when you get a great idea, it's not just one person that gets it. But this is happening in Montreal, it's happening in Vancouver, and it's also happening in Mysticini and in some other places as well. That the body of Christ is together. So by you broadcasting and us being together, it is, it is hugely important, because it's not just the mark about what happened in the last 150 years, but it's now looking forward to what God will do in the next 150 years. That leads to my next question. What is your prayer for the next 150 years for this nation? Well, it's twofold. Uh, I believe a lot of the ills of society are not a, a result of just man, because people do what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, but so many times, I think there are two, two trains of thought that many people in the body of Christ, they'll go ahead and they say, let's just do this. We see a need and we feel it. See a hurt and we heal it. And then after that, there's another one that says, well, it's too big. I don't know if we can really accomplish the task, right? And then the other side of that coin is, well, it's, it's so much stuff going on, so many laws that are being changed and all of the, the things that are happening. Who am I to make a difference? Yet, when God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all else shall be added, he, did, he never asked us to fix it. He just asked us to seek him. And when we seek him, when we're trying to figure it out, God's already worked it out. And I believe that Isaiah 46.10 says that the God who calls things that are not from ancient times that are not yet done, that we're here to agree with the intercession of Christ after the crucifixion and resurrection, and he's the one that we're trusting that the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brian, for your time. Absolutely.